Metanomics is brought to you by Remedy Communications and Doosan Writers Metaverse. So, M- Michelle, since you're the clinician working directly with your clients, I'd like to start with you. And could you just uh, paint a picture for us uh, uh, about, you know, some some patient, give us a sense of uh, what uh, what issues they're coming to you with and what type of behavioral therapy you're providing? Sure. Um, one of our most memorable participants is a 19-year-old young man, and he had just started college and was having significant um, deficits and doing well in college. And after he and his mother had heard about the Center for Brain Health um, through the news story that we had, um, his mom contacted us and he came in and um, he told us about some of the social impairments that he was having, especially in his relationship with his roommate, for example, and how difficult it was for him to speak with his teachers and really grasp a great college learning experience because of that. Also, he was working at a nearby Walmart and wasn't sure why he wasn't succeeding as much as he thought he should be. So we felt he was a really good match for our program, and he came in for some initial um, pre-testing, and that includes an EEG and an fMRI that Dan will talk about later. And then we put him through our intervention, um, a virtual reality intervention, which consists of 10 sessions of a beautiful storyline of adult-related scenarios. And what we do in these scenarios is myself and another therapist will work together to pose a situation in which the participant has to work through. And these, like I said, are adult-related. So um, they have to work with a difficult roommate, for example. Um, They have to earn money to live in the apartment that they're living in on the island. And to do that, they have to go and find a job. So all of these issues are very relatable to real life. So this young man completed our intervention um, and went through our post-testing, and he was so thankful for all of the help that we were able to give him, and he still calls us to this day to tell us about how improved his relationships have been um, with his roommate, for example, and how he's able to go to teachers and talk to them and negotiate through a lot of issues at work. And so uh, now, I, I, Dan, this may be more a question for a researcher than a clinician, but uh, feel free either of you to correct me on that. Uh, but I, I guess I get a little confused on, I mean, there, there are the neurological issues and sort of the, the underlying condition uh, that, that someone may be struggling with. And then there are the behavioral uh, treatments that you're providing. So uh, I guess I guess and well maybe Michelle if if I could ask you uh sure. could uh you know what do you, do you know uh exactly what the sort of the physical uh or neurological condition was that this person was uh was suffering from and then what yeah. what particular behaviors were they that were causing the problems and and how do you identify that Sure. Um, we have criteria of who um, is a good match for our study, and those people would have some um, social impairment and a diagnosis of one in the following, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, Asperger's, which is a high form um, functioning um, autism, tra- traumatic brain injury, or schizophrenia. So for the young gentleman I just described, he has something called Asperger's, and that's a condition where someone has great impairment in social interactions, as well as restricted, repetitive um, patterns of behavior or interests. And that really impairs the ability to function socially and occupationally. Mm-hmm. So um, for that young man, his those behaviors with the restricted interest, for example, um, really impacted his ability to make friends. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so... Uh... I, I mean, I guess I, one, you're not just uh, treating the, the symptoms rather than the cause, is that right? I mean, you, you, this behavioral uh, treatment is actually, uh, I mean, it, well, I guess it's a question maybe more. It, it, mm-hmm. Is it changing the, the underlying condition or just helping them address it more? Uh, well, the underlying condition is manifested by these behaviors. Um, and what we're trying to do is improve their ability for success in their life. So yes, we're, 
we're um, helping them improve their behaviors and not the underlying condition per se. Mm -hmm. okay. One and, of the things so, I... Oh, oh sure, Dan. I would add, um, as part of the research, we really are trying to get at what are the underlying uh, reasons for the conditions. And these aren't extremely well known, um, even this, though these disorders have been uh, diagnosed and uh, studied for a number of years. Uh, it's not totally clear, for instance, what about the brain of someone with on the autism spectrum uh, is different than uh, someone who's not on that spectrum. And with brain injury, uh, it's very important to get clear information from brain imaging on uh, what areas are, are showing impairments. That's something we can actually look at. Uh, it differs to some degree between individuals. So that's one of the important phases of the project on the research end is actually trying to, to get sensitive measures uh, that identify what may be the underlying causes.